to all my friends across the globe. My name is Shaylin and I'm coming to you today from my beautiful home state of Oregon, but I wanted to pop onto all of your screens to wish you all a very happy Earth Day. So as a native Oregonian, a biologist, and an avid nature lover, I, I care very deeply for all of Oregon's ecosystems. And unfortunately, we've been seeing some pretty big changes. We are seeing changes in our water and air quality. Some of our marine apex predators are starving to death. We are facing major droughts and experiencing extreme wildfire patterns. And these problems are really just the tip of the iceberg. And collectively, they're causing things like ecosystem loss, a loss of species and an overall decrease in biodiversity. But I, I don't want doom and gloom to be the take home message today. I came here to spread a message of hope for a better future and to hopefully empower all of you watching today to take the time and the effort needed to invest in our planet for a better change. And I know when you start to think about conservation, it's just this huge, topic and can be incredibly overwhelming and believe me I feel that too which is why I wanted to offer up two quick pieces of advice we can start today on Earth Day and the first one is take action because we no longer have the luxury of time to sit and chit chat about climate change and things we can do for our future we must act and it can be as small or as big as you can invest into it today it might just be taking your own bags to the grocery store or using your own refillable water bottle because even the smallest change can have a ripple effect to bigger change globally and number two is a little bit easier just get outside, spend time outdoors, maybe listen to the birds or walk by the river. And if you don't have time for that, just drink your coffee out on the porch because the more time we spend in nature, the more connected to it we feel. And when we feel connected to something, we are more likely going to fight to protect it. 
So hopefully you can join me today on Earth Day and every day in taking action and getting outside. And as far as my personal pledge to invest in this planet moving forward, I'm going to be a more mindful consumer and be more thoughtful about where I'm getting my clothes and my food, trying to shop more locally and ethically and reduce my carbon footprint overall. So I really, really hope you can all join me today on Earth Day and every day putting in the time and effort to invest in our planet for a better future for all of us. Because what we have is really too precious to lose. So I think that's all from me today because I have some colleagues that would like to share some words as well. And I'll pass it off first to my friend up north, Nathan. Take it away, Nate. <laughs> Hi, my name is Nathan Kelly, and I'm here near my home on Klinkitani, home of the Akwan people. Southeast Alaska is a place that truly stole my heart. It's a place that I consider myself beyond lucky to call my home and get the chance to work and explore. A region that has been occupied and protected by the Alaska natives since time immemorial and still today. It's very easy to get completely enamored by its glacially fed streams rolling with fish, old growth forests filled with green, oceans bursting with wildlife, and wilderness so vast it seems untouched. But Southeast Alaska is under constant threats from proposed clear cuts, hazardous mines, and the overall effects of climate change. Alaska is seeing a warming trend much faster than other areas in our country. All of these things put great stress on the people and animals that call this place home, especially our vital salmon species, a species that is so important for our region's way of life. Living in a temperate rainforest does have its benefit as 95% of our power comes from clean, salmon-friendly hydropower. And we are also surrounded by nearly 60 million acres of designated wilderness, which is one of our most important carbon strongholds in the fight against climate change. Continuing to protect Southeast Alaska's ecosystems is of utmost importance to ensure our planet stays healthy for the future. Today on Earth Day, I'm planning on getting outside by walking, not driving, and eating locally harvested and sustainably caught food to limit my carbon footprint. I hope you have a wonderful Earth Day as well and form new habits that create a lasting change. And now over to my colleague in the Galapagos, Tui de Roy. Hi, I grew up in the Galapagos Islands since the age of two, when my parents, almost 70 years ago, decided to leave Belgium and become pioneers on these islands. I never received any formal education, but these islands taught me everything I needed to know to become a world-renowned uh, wildlife photographer and author. And so my camera literally has taken me to the farthest corners of all seven continents. And as I get older, sort of 50 years later, I've circled back to Galapagos because this place is just so incredible. I've done books on many different parts of the world and now I'm back 20 books later concentrating on Galapagos once more. And that's because really there is no other place like it anywhere in this world. There's no place like Galapagos. It is just so wild, so perfect. Nature is just laid out in front of you. You can be part of it. You can be within it. And as you can hear the finches singing over my head. So that's really what's so, so special about this place. And what my parents certainly couldn't have guessed, and I didn't either, back all those years ago, is that now Galapagos is actually in a better state of preservation than it was 50 or 100 years ago because a number of islands have been brought back to their original state. Some species that were on the brink of extinction are now flourishing again. And really, it's quite extraordinary that we can see a place that is so close to what it was millennia ago. And that, of course, didn't come by itself. That took decades, literally decades, of very hard work by a dedicated team of scientists and conservation managers and visitors. 
because visitors actually fuel not only the, the enthusiasm and the, the dynamics of conservation, but they also support it financially, which otherwise would not have been possible. So it's really a, a joining of forces between scientists, conservation managers, and visitors that has enabled Galapagos to return to its near pristine state. And so what I'd like to reflect on on this Earth Day is that we actually have a very resilient ecosystem and a resilient ecosystem can really recover incredibly well. And so what we have here is an awful lot to lose and an awful lot to save. And that's what everybody has come together to try and do, save it for posterity. So now I'm going to pass over to my colleague Holly who is a Lindblad Expeditions National Geographic grantee working somewhere out there on killer whales. Very interesting. Thanks, Stewie, and happy Earth Day, everyone. My name is Dr. Holly Fernbach, and today I'm sitting here in the beautiful San Juan Islands, a place that I'm fortunate enough to live and work. I am the Marine Mammal Research Director of a nonprofit called SR3, Sea Life Response, Rehabilitation and Research, and it's a Seattle area nonprofit that's dedicated to the welfare of marine wildlife. Now, my research here in the islands is focused on assessing the health of an endangered population of killer whales called the southern resident killer whales uh, with an aim of helping to recover the population. Uh, now, I'm also a National Geographic Explorer, um, and uh, today I want to talk to you about some place that I think is probably the most spectacular place in the world, Antarctica. Now, my colleagues and I are fortunate enough to have had our research supported by the Lindblad Expeditions National Geographic Fund now for more than 10 years. And each year we're able to hop on one of the ships in the Lindblad fleet and head south to the Antarctic Peninsula to conduct our research on whale health. Now, Antarctica is just amazing. Everywhere you look, there's ice. It's teeming with wildlife like penguins and seals and of course whales. But very sadly, it's warming more rapidly than any other region on the planet. And it's imperative that we understand how this rapid warming is impacting this pristine habitat. And so our research focuses on whale health. We're very interested in, in how top consumers like humpback whales and minke whales and top predators like killer whales are faring in these times of, of rapid warming. And by understanding their health, how their health is changing over time, uh, provides us with a lot of important information on the health of the ecosystem that supports them. So we provide the results from our research to conservation and management groups with an aim of trying to preserve this pristine environment. Now today on this gorgeous day, we're gonna head out and take advantage of the great weather and go out on a whale survey. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. And just remember that you can make a difference just by adopting small changes in your life. And each one of you can contribute to preserving pristine habitats like Antarctica. Now I'm going to hand off to my colleague, Jose Calvo, in Costa Rica. Hello, I'm Jose in tropical sunny Costa Rica. We are a small country with a big reputation in conservation. We can happily say today that we have over a quarter of our territory protected and we have become a champion of conservation and an ecological wonderland. Nowadays, today, Costa Rica finds itself committed to develop an ambitious, long-term plan for the descarbonization of its economy, a gradual transformation and incremental change to the goal of significantly reducing the use of fossil fuels from our economy. Costa Rica aspires to be a modern, green and emission-free economy by 250. Already more than 90% of Costa Rica's electricity is produced by renewable resources, such as geothermal, eolic, and hydroelectric power plants. We really take the protection of our Earth seriously, and we truly believe that we can make it together. Now it's time to pass it over to my dear colleague, Emma Ridley, 
in the wonderful Galapagos Islands. Hello, my name is Emma Ridley and I love our beautiful, diverse planet. My very favourite part, however, is the fascinating continent of South America that I have called home for the past 25 years. South America was once part of a supercontinent before breaking off to become a biologically rich island continent that remained isolated for over 30 million years. This long isolation gave rise to a tremendous biological originality with many animals and plants belonging to unique groups found nowhere else. South America is also home to incredible features such as the longest continental mountain chain in the world, the most extensive tropical rainforest in the world and the driest desert in the world. We can find rich ecosystems here as diverse as Andean cloud forests and lowland dry forests, great savannas and plains, lakes and rivers, peatlands, wetlands, mangroves and offshore islands. It is this diversity in habitats that has led to an amount of speciation that is greater than in any other part of the world. And in fact, South America has many of the world's most important biodiversity hotspots and houses a significant proportion of the world's animals and plant diversity. Just take the Amazon rainforest, for example. One in 10 known species live here, the single largest collection of animal and plant species in the world. All of this makes it imperative to preserve South America, yet tragically this mind-boggling diversity is under threat due to the expansion and intensification of human activities. South America has a growing population of over 400 million people and is experiencing unregulated economic growth and destructive land use practices such as massive deforestation for pastures. Now, this leads to the degradation and destruction of natural habitats and areas that used to be continuous have become broken and fragmented, isolating the plants and animals within them. These broken ecosystems also face the larger scale threats of climate change, leaving species with nowhere to migrate and little capacity for adaptation. All of this could be mitigated by focusing on sustainable livelihoods protecting more areas within these hotspots and creating corridors between habitat patches that could aid in dispersal and connectivity. On this Earth Day, I commit to cutting back on animal protein like beef and ensuring that all I eat is sourced locally via sustainable processes and involving as little waste as possible. Let's insist that subsidies begin to focus on these areas so they become accessible to all, not just to a fortunate few. And now, over to founder and co-chair of Limblad Expeditions, Sven Limblad. Earth Day as a concept was uh, developed in, uh, on April 22nd, uh, 1970, 52 years ago. And it was a group of people that got together and wanted to make uh, or create a day that would focus our attention on a path to develop a better relationship uh, with our planet. I didn't know anything about Earth Day because on April 22nd to uh, 1970, I was living in a place called Savo East National Park, Kenya's largest national park. Savo had the largest population of elephants and black rhino in the world, and they were being killed at alarming rates in order to provide ivory and rhino horn uh, to various peoples for artistic purposes, medicinal purposes. And I spent all that time hanging around with game wardens, filmmakers, scientists, and became deeply, deeply imbued with the fact that nature in its natural state was not only beautiful and to be appreciated from, from that perspective, but was really, really essential. Our relationship with the environment was an absolutely critical idea from the perspective of human well-being. So when I came back to the United States, and I actually started this company in 1979, what did I want to do? I wanted more than anything else to bring people and expose them to the world, and then create an environment where we could have a conversation around some of the challenges that we had to acknowledge were out there. And so the whole organization is really, really committed to the idea that we have to do everything we can to advance the health of the relationship between human beings and our planet. We're not doomed. 
we can change this relationship. We have scientists, we have innovators, we have thinkers, we have writers, we have uh, all kinds of people who are capable of this. We just need political will and we need to realize that this is something that we must do. And by the way, the rewards from being successful at this will be enormous. So I hope everyone has a wonderful Earth Day. I hope you go out and travel and explore our, our wonderful world. And then I hope that you find your own creative ways to make sure that our children have a bright future. Uh, thanks a lot. Hi, I'm Dolph Burley and I'm the CEO for Lindblad Expeditions. The question today is, what is Lindblad doing to invest in the future of our planet? And that's a particularly good question because it's Earth Day 2022. And the short answer to that is that every single thing that we're doing is with the intent of investing in our planet. The way we build our ships, the way we introduce guests to remote places, the investments we're making in our people and their education so they can in fact invest in guests. All of these things we consider to be investments in the planet and frankly in the future of humanity and uh, all of the people who interact with Lindblad Expeditions. Sometimes I'm asked how does investing in the planet, which is the theme for this year's Earth Day, tie to the future of Lindblad? And the first thing that comes to mind for me is just how important it is that we keep this community of people and experts that are delivering the Lindblad experience together and growing and enjoying each other and learning from each other. So that's scientists and expedition leaders, it's elders from the indigenous peoples that we visit and that we work with, and of course it's all of us who work here who care so much about what this year's theme is about. So uh, it's really the people and the community. A great tradition here at Lindblad Expeditions is to have our team get actively engaged in Earth Day. And so in keeping with this year's theme, there are three things that we're encouraging all of our folks to do. And hopefully these are inspirational to you and might give you some ideas. One is to be involved in a cleanup project. If there's a cleanup project anywhere near you, please go and lend a hand. Secondly is going meatless for the day. And thirdly, the idea of investing in organizations that have a mission and a purpose uh, that help the cause of Earth Day and specifically environmental sustainability. So investing and donating funds is another way that can, you can make a real difference. I hope that you all have enjoyed this video as much as we have enjoyed making it. I hope that you have a wonderful Earth Day and I hope that every day in the next year is one that has a little bit of Earth Day sentiment and orientation for you and for all of us as we all invest in the planet. <laughs>